I have been wanting to get a new Linux laptop for quite a while now. You know, a Surface is fun and all, but its power limitations don't really make it the most flexible option for a power user, especially in offline scenarios where you just can't connect to a more powerful system either. Meet the Tuxedo Stellaris Slim 15 Gen 6, a quite powerful notebook with an AMD 8 core CPU and a dedicated NVIDIA graphics card powered off a 99Wh battery to achieve long working or gaming sessions. So how has my experience with it been for the past couple of days? Did I try Tuxedo OS? How good is its gaming performance and video editing capabilities? And if you are considering on getting a new laptop as well, can I recommend a device like this? All of this and more in today's video. But before we start off, I quickly wanted to mention that this is in fact not a sponsored video. I bought the device straight off the website for full price just like everyone else. The main reason why Tuxedo is of course the hardware combination of the dedicated GPU and the battery. Anyway, let's talk about this thing. So first of all, why this one in particular? Technically speaking, I would have liked to go for a laptop that only has an onboard GPU, since just having a second GPU in the system, even when idling, does drain the battery more and increases the size and weight. However, video editing in 1440p with 4K source footage does require a lot of VRAM, and in my case with DaVinci Resolve and Nvidia GPU to support proper hardware acceleration that can have an impact on performance. And yeah, it's also that Resolve on mobile AMD chips is also not that well supported. A device with a long-lasting battery, a somewhat decent form factor and an NVIDIA GPU equals the Stellaris Slim 15. So much for that. Let's talk about the device itself though. In here we have an AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS processor with Radeon 780M onboard graphics, which by the way performs quite well on its own and from the sheer CPU performance even outperforms the Ryzen 5 5600X in my main rig, which is quite nice for some more heavy tasks. I personally went with 32GB of DDR5 memory, which in my opinion is nowadays kind of required, especially when you do a lot of graphical work or just gaming. More on that later though. For video editing or heavier tasks in general, the Stellaris Slim 15 also comes with an RTX 4060 and 8GB of GDDR6 memory, which I could have upgraded to an RTX 4070, but I didn't really think that it was worth it for me personally, given that I was just after the VRAM and Nvidia. Storage, 1TB NVMe, which can be expanded via a second storage slot later on. And of course the highlight, the 99Wh battery that can achieve quite impressive results based on your workload and configuration. Again, more on that later. Overall build quality of the laptop feels good. Like to give you a feeling of it, you know those cheaper laptops that kind of feel like you're bending the screen when opening them with one hand? The Tuxedo Stellaris Slim 15 has none of that, which is why I consider it quite good, despite the plastic not being anything high pricey, or so it would seem. Trackpad and keyboard feel okay, the webcam quality is overall speaking quite good and can be closed off manually, and you get pretty good I.O. On the back we have one mini display port 1.4 and one HDMI 2.1 port, which are hardwired to the Nvidia GPU, so you don't have to worry about the HDMI 2.1 limitation that AMD has on Linux. You also get one USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 port, which also supports DisplayPort 1.4, but connected to the onboard GPU. This one also supports charging by the way, so it's technically a docking station port, and last but not least an RJ45 network port, which I'm really glad about. On the left you get one USB-A and USB-C 3.2 connector, as well as an audio jack for a headset, and on the right two more USB-A ports and an SD card reader. So technically everything, which is kind of good, but also kind of bad since what would you need a docking station for then? I honestly think I'm just gonna buy some cable holder and connect everything to the back, since if I want to fully take advantage of the dedicated GPU then I need to connect it directly anyway. For the operating system, if you go Linux, then you have essentially two options to choose from. Ubuntu or their very own Tuxedo OS, which I think features the latest release of the KDE Plasma desktop, as well as some inbuilt optimizations tuned specifically for Tuxedo hardware. And it's smooth. Like I already had two 144Hz monitors, but 240Hz on such a small display is something else entirely. Anyway, I was initially going to try to use Tuxedo OS for a while, but when I went to install DaVinci Resolve natively on my system, because I thought I might not need to containerize it like with AMD hardware, it… yeah, it kind of bricked everything. Tuxedo OS really didn't like some of the dependencies that DaVinci Resolve requires and just marked a bunch of other stuff for deletion. I'm still not entirely sure which dependency caused this, but anyway, I just went straight to Fedora. Fun fact. 
Despite Fedora not being officially supported by Tuxedo, they do have a Fedora repository and also a couple for different distributions which you can add. You can then install all of the drivers, though generally speaking this hardware works really well on Linux in general already, but not everything is supported. On Tuxedo OS for example, you could quite easily select a couple of different options when it comes to power management for the onboard and dedicated GPU. However, you can't do that on Fedora, because the used package is just not available. Anyway, the rest is actually working really well. Even the power profiles, which by the way also allow you to boost the Nvidia power draw from the default 115 watt limit up to 140, which can increase gaming performance a bit if you're GPU limited, which on this laptop can be the case quite often given its strong CPU. Speaking of, I didn't try many games yet at the time of filming this video, but Counter-Strike 2 ran quite good on the native display resolution of 2560 x 1600. It's of course nowhere near my RX 6800 XT, however for a couple of rounds with a bit more fine tuning, it's actually possible to play, even on a slightly higher level. More graphic intense games though, especially when hooked up to other high resolution monitors are going to struggle a bit if you want to achieve a high frame rate, mainly due to the limitations of the Nvidia mobile GPU version. I'm not entirely sure though if it's enough for me to get rid of my main gaming PC. It is faster than my old GTX 1080, which I had in my system almost 3 years ago. But man, you're giving up so much performance and I'm personally not really a fan of upscaling, even though that would improve the performance a lot. It honestly just depends on your preferences. The last piece of setting it up though was of course DaVinci Resolve. And this software is really something else. See the problem with Resolve is that it is built for an LTS release of a very specific distro, which means that even if you install all of the required dependencies, it might still not work because the dependencies are essentially too new. To fix that we could use something like Distrobox and an older release, like I'm for example using a Fedora 39 container on my main AMD system. On this laptop though, a setup like this even when just using the onboard AMD GPU wouldn't work, since the OpenCL dependency does not fully support it, so we need to use Nvidia anyway. Now getting the Nvidia GPU to get recognized by DaVinci Resolve is fairly easy. Install the driver and the CUDA dependencies, set up the container with an Nvidia flag, install the basic dependencies for DaVinci Resolve and that's it. However, CUDA did not work. So I did a bunch of troubleshooting myself, but eventually I just thought, why am I doing this myself when there are pre-built installers like DaVinci Box out there? Now installing DaVinci Resolve via DaVinci Box worked like a charm, that is if your Nvidia GPU is detected by a required tool that you need to install beforehand, but again, no CUDA support. And this seems to be an issue with the driver, which they already tried to fix, and I also eventually ran into the issue that I licensed my studio edition too many times in a week because of my trial and errors. So as of the moment of recording this video, it's not working yet. But I think that Nick from the Linux experiment is also running it on a device similar to this one, so there has to be a way to run it. <sighs> Blackmagic, your software distribution sucks. But otherwise, I'm really happy with it at the moment. I didn't measure the battery life myself yet, but it definitely drains way slower than my surface, and I didn't even use a lower power profile yet. My Fedora desktop feels incredibly smooth, the display looks nice, it maybe even supports HDR. I'm honestly not quite sure about this since it's not really referenced anywhere on their website, however both KD Plasma and GNOME offered it to me. Kinda weird. And honestly, I think that Tuxedo did do a great job with this laptop. While it's certainly not the cheapest option on the market, it doesn't really feel overpriced and I appreciate the huge amount of IO options. As of right now, if you're looking to get a Linux laptop and also require an Nvidia GPU like me, then from a sheer technical perspective I do think that this model does hold its value, especially due to the incredible driver support. But if you don't really need an Nvidia GPU and can settle for AMD instead, then you of course can always choose another one. This video almost feels like I'm a bit too positive, but I actually didn't really have any good laptops up until now. If I find something annoying or if I'm actually going to switch out my main PC, then I'll let you know of course, but otherwise that's where I'll leave it. So what do you think? Do you think that these laptops are worth their price and which distro or desktop environment would you use on them personally? Please let us know down in the comments.
Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel, make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Linux videos or tech reviews. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you had a blast. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.